10 winners and zero losers today. For those of you that are just visiting with us, it probably looks like a whole bunch of stuff that uh, it might be intimidating to you um, because of all the stuff that you're seeing. But you'll notice I'm not, every time an indicator pops up, I'm not jumping at it. An indicator really only indicates that a particular condition exists. So what we want to do is qualify a trade setup when a confluence of conditions exist. So we're looking for more than a condition or two conditions or three. So we have trade setups that we're going to trade when we have a, a, a number of the conditions all come together at the same time. So what you're seeing now and all the indicators that are on the charts are simply just like indicators in your car. You know, you have all of the dials and gauges and things in your car just tell you what the condition is, but it doesn't tell you it's time to do something. So we're just waiting until all the conditions come together that tell us it's time to do something. And even though you see a lot of stuff like like this, you know, a lot of these indicators, that, that really doesn't mean to us there's anything that's required of us, anything that we must do. So don't be intimidated by that. You know, a lot of people get intimidated immediately, but this really is once you learn what the indicators are and how they work and how to use them, you'll find that this is really about the easiest trading system you'll ever find. All right, so that's a belated rock star on the YM shorting it. It actually popped up, gave me a chance to short it at a better price. And there's a plus five. I shorted it after it got up here. It opened and jumped up. It got a bit of a late start on it, but it jumped up here. And then as it dropped again, I got to a plus five. So I'm always looking for a better fill. Typically, the open of the bar is where I'm looking for the fill. But if I can get a better fill, because this is this, I would be trading for a pullback here. So I'm looking for the open of the bar or better because price jumped by the time I got my order on. I was a bit late on it, which worked out for me. So I got it here and I shorted it here and got my plus five. Keep an eye on the CL. It was uh, inside the zone, but it qualified for a rock star uh, because it had the resistance behind it, the high of the day. So I ended up getting that as a rock star trade with the high of the day resistance behind it. Almost got to my target. Got one tick away. All right, plus five. So this is a one bar push here, right? This is not something that I recommend that you new folks trade. It fits with my trade plan, with my risk tolerance levels. It worked out just fine. This is a really easy trading system to trade, but it can be tuned to your level of risk, to whether you want to trade more or less often, to whether you want to be very conservative or very aggressive or somewhere in between. You can tune the rules to meet your criteria, but you would want to do that after a while, after you've learned all the setups, after you've watched the charts for a while, after you have been practicing the, uh, the trade setups that are the more conservative version of the trade setup. So that's the beauty of our system is you don't have to conform to my risk tolerance levels to be successful. You can do your own your own thing, but wait until you get good at it. Right now we're just kind of waiting on the bus. There's you know the setups will will show up, will present themselves to us. So there's nothing to really study when we're sitting here uh, and we're waiting. There's there's no analysis that needs to be done. There's no crystal balling. There's no hoping. We just sit here and we call it waiting on the bus because that's how much effort you have to put into what we're doing here. There's no analysis necessary. What I think might happen next doesn't matter one bit. It's only reacting to what does happen. So all we have to do is wait for that and that's when we know it's time to get on the bus. Especially when you have a system with a high hit rate like ours, you know, it makes it easier to wait because you know when the setups do come, you have a pretty good probability that it's going to work out in your favor. Hey, what's in the CL? Since this is just high of the day, I'm going to need a rock star. With major resistance behind it, I could trade this as a speed tick trade, but high of the day is minor resistance. So if I get a rock star, I'm going to short it. So I shorted it. 
Some of you likely got a better fill while it was freight training. Plus five. Okay, so I've taken three trades this morning. All three trades are, are winners. So here's what I do. I'm going to continue to trade for the rest of the session just like normal. But I hate giving my earnings back. So my mission in trading is consistency. And I want to have a very consistent income from month to month. The way I do that is I simply trade for three winners, net three winners, or net three losers for the trading day. And then I stop trading live and I continue trading in sim just exactly exactly the same way I would trade. Nothing changes except for the account that I'm trading. This is how I build consistent monthly income and I don't allow money to cloud my judgment. I don't allow greed to cloud my judgment. If I take net three winners or net three losers, I stop trading live. Okay, so now I'm, I'm trading in sim, but I do it exactly the same way I call out the trades exactly the same way. I hardly even know the difference. And a lot of times I'll do that, and I won't even call it out in the room. I'm only really telling you guys because your visitor's here. Um, I usually don't even have to share it with the trade room. They already know um, that I do it that way. Or also the GC. So a lot of things going on here all, of, all at once. I bought the GC. That's a speed tick trade. It backed up a tick, so I got a better fill. The GC has this habit of moving like that and then going sideways. So I'm going to probably manage the GC a little bit quicker than some of the other instruments. There it is. Plus five GC. All right. That was a naked rock star that jumped on the open of the NQ. So I shorted it. Plus five. All right, so here's what we did. We had some nice momentum pushing up a new high of the day. Pullback alert, oversold condition. That's this pink outline. Speed tick, major line of resistance. Okay, so all I was waiting for was the open of this bar. We had everything we needed in place. The open of this bar, we had the rock star. So the, we shorted at the open of the bar. We had the high of the day as resistance behind us, but we still could have tra uh, traded this without that. And down it goes, just like it's supposed to. This is gold right here. This is what we're looking for. We want a strong potential for exhaustion and then this pullback. Now, we have an uptrend here, right? A short-term uptrend. We we kind of anticipate that this uh, the price is going to continue on this uptrend. This pullback is our edge right here. This is a textbook trade setup for us. You both going to need a rock star, right? Shorted the YM Miss the NQ too fast. Plus five. Both of these are the same, so I'm just going to explain one of them. Notice the strong push. See this this period of kind of consolidation here? And then all of a sudden it starts pushing like crazy. Notice the size of these up thrust bars. And then this long bar. Notice it's turning a lighter color. Notice this velocity indicator. Notice the speed tick and this pullback alert. This speed tick says that the, the trades are being processed faster than is likely able that the retail traders are trading it. So that means it's manipulated by something or someone. The orders are being processed really, really fast. All right, so that's a good sign for us. Now they do this because they want to create a reaction. This pullback alert qualifies this to be a naked rock star trade. This pullback alert says that the volume in this bar was strong on the buyers until we got up in this area and then the sellers jumped in. The sellers got very interested and now the buyers and sellers are fighting. Now, the buyers started way down here and went all the way up here and they have pushed about as far as they feel comfortable. So they're getting exhausted. The sellers have been sitting up here waiting at the high of the day because they know when the buyers get up here near the high of the day, they're going to get a little reluctant to push it further, at least initially. So the sellers are sitting up here waiting. The buyers ran right into them, and they're, but they're exhausted. So that's what this says. There is an awful lot of technical analysis going on inside that dot. Okay, We're reading every single tick that comes into every single bar. So this tells us that there's a churning action going on. That initially during this bar, we had a lot of buying and then the sellers jumped in and the buyers and sellers were fighting. When that happens, the sellers are not exhausted yet. They're gonna jump in hard and strong. And then 
on the open of this bar. With all of that, then we also have divergence from momentum. So even though price is setting a higher high, momentum has already shifted directions. And when that happens, price will almost always follow momentum, okay? So this is what happened right here. Another almost textbook trade setup. Got the Rockstar on the RTY. Backed up a little bit, so I bought it at a uh, better price than the open of the bar. Wow, it took off. Yeah, it went and it went to Target and it took off. All right, watching the RTY, YM, and for those of you that trade the ES, you can watch that. GCs, yeah, we can take that naked rock star on the YM, not on the NQ. Uh, plus five on the YM. It hit my target a few times before it actually uh, filled. We're, we're looking at a graphical representation of people's thoughts, feelings, and emotions about price at a particular point in time. That's it. That's all charts are. Ten winners and zero losers today. And so that, that, that points to the logic behind our indicators here. You notice you don't see, other than the moving average, you don't see a whole bunch of lines being drawn all over the screens. Those lines give you a lot of gray areas. They don't give you... Uh, yes or no answers, particularly the oscillators and the histograms. They don't give you yes or no's. They give you lots of shades of gray. And that, I found, is a lot of the problem that I had with trading. I needed yes or no, and that's all. Don't, don't give me shades of gray to confuse me. So our indicators, you'll notice when they print, they print in real time when the condition can exists and not until so there's no question that the condition exists and not what level of condition it just it's there yes or no watching the cl now potential for a naked rock star trade here there's just a potential which means that on the open of the next bar if i get a gold rock star i will put on a buy order if it's not if it didn't pull back too far already that's exactly what I did, and it opened and dropped a hair, so I got a nice fill there. Just touched my my stop, touched it, and took me out. That's the first out of, what, 10 winners and one loser today. If you weren't here earlier, I stopped trading live uh, a long time ago because I had already hit my target for the day. And so even though I just took a loss there, that was in SIM. I didn't give any of my earnings back today. That's all safely tucked away in my account. We're almost always right. There's something called freight training. And that's this little extra here. Because what happens is, you know, it, that we're having a hard push and exhaustion is setting in. Um, and then we have a divergent signal. But that doesn't mean this doesn't push just a little bit more. And then go and do what it's supposed to do. So over time, I've developed in my plan uh, after doing analysis of knowing that usually if it's going to freight train like this, it's going to be less than seven ticks. So that's why I put my stop at seven ticks. Okay, that's it's not a random number, but sometimes it does go that seven, eight, nine ticks, and then sometimes it just keeps going. But usually this combination right here is going to lead to this pullback. There was just a little bit of that momentum of, of price moving. It just kind of like a freight train. It was taking a while to slow it down before it could change directions. Well, visitors, thanks for visiting with us today. That ends the session for today. We trade from 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time every day. You're welcome to, if you have your own indicators, you're welcome to continue trading. But we're going to close the trade room, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all again tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed your time with us today and got any questions, ready to go ahead and get started with us. Just let Connor know.